So you can't tell your body where it is that you want it to lose fat cells. It just doesn't happen. Um, if it did, I can guarantee you um, women wouldn't have the need to get breast augmentations from competing. So. Are you ready for the chase now? channel it has been a little bit since I've recorded some footage so we're just gonna kind of do a little bit of a recap um, what you're about to see here is gonna be my progress update for 13 weeks out from my last competition so 13 weeks into my off season so we will cut here to the progress update Posted previously on um, an Instagram post about doing a Q&A about my off season so I wanted to go ahead and discuss some of those questions that were asked so thank you to everyone who asked and after we go through these Q&A questions there's not that many um, we will cut to the back workout from probably I mean it's it's a while ago sorry girls um, I've been a little bit busy um, and I actually wanted to just uh, vlog this outside today because it's beautiful and the sun's like setting in my backyard and it's just uh, awesome plus when it's setting in my office the light at this time is terrible so that also has put a damper on vlogging because by the time I get home from work um, it's sunset and or it's just dark in general so I can't necessarily do a whole lot of vlogging so I guess I'm gonna need to take that in consideration or if you have any light recommendations from all my other vloggers who are viewers please comment below you gonna get into some questions so Kristen Marie asks can we talk more about eating out at restaurants and if you change anything about your day if you know you'll be eating out or if you keep things the same and also if you go over does this change your following day or do you get right back on the plan you intended? So, funny you should ask because I did talk a little bit about the effort mentality on both my Facebook and um, a previous Instagram post. So this kind of coincides with that. Um, when I go out to eat at a restaurant, um, if I feel in my off season that A, I can loosen the reins a little bit, B, if it's a social situation such as traveling with family, that you know you just get that time to kind of relax then you know I just kind of eat sensibly um, my husband's great about splitting things with me I don't tend to eat an entire cheeseburger I don't eat an entire you know thing of fries I don't take this as a chance to just open up the floodgates per se I take it as a chance to enjoy the company of others and enjoy the time you know not having to eat a meal pre-prepared so again this is just for me because i am a competitive athlete and my mindset with everything has changed just a little bit over the years but um i don't open the floodgates um right now that's not the intention for my off season is to have like a free meal every week um if it's geared towards you know my vacation coming up you know yes of course i'm gonna kind of just you know eat intuitively but right now my goal is strong and in my environment with work with training, with home life, like I can make my food, so I do. Um, and that's, if I stay stronger now, those little instances of social act, social interaction won't impact my physique nearly as much. So it's not a matter of like, oh, you know, I come in from having a hard day at work, I'm just gonna eat whatever I want to. No, because I may want to eat something socially with friends so I'm gonna stick to my guns when I'm at home and and that's just kind of how I am it keeps me managed it keeps me focused and if I meal prep then I don't find myself having to make last-minute decisions make 
you know, purchases outside of, you know, my traditional food choices. When I can control the variables, I try to control them as much as possible. And again, this is just me talking about my off season. I'm not intending my clients to act like this. I'm not intending, you know, other people to act like this. I have a specific goal in mind. So always keep that in mind when you are watching my channel is that I intend to make a run for becoming a bikini pro in the IFBB. So I'm very um, tight with myself right now and that's just the nature of my goal. So um, to answer the rest of her question is, do I change things the following day or do I get right back on a plan? Absolutely 100% get right back on plan. I'm not gonna reduce my calories. I'm not gonna reduce you know, carbohydrate intake or anything because I had an effort day or because I had a day where I was socializing with family. Consistency is key. Regardless of you know what you may have done the previous day, your body gets a chance to reset when it goes to bed. So don't change yourself and be undulating with calorie intake. You know, oh, I went way over my macros here, so now my body is trying to recuperate from those extra calories, and now I'm gonna drop my calories. So that just gets the body in a constant undulation, and the goal with an off season, as with prep, is consistency, consistency, consistency. So if you go off plan, off course for just momentarily, get right back on the horse and do it all over again the next day as you're supposed to. Um, this is again, just my reiteration of you can't have a ton of variables moving in all different directions and expect to have your desired outcome. So with that said, you know, don't come, don't come to that effing mentality for an entire day and then wake up the next day regretting that and then try to manipulate and change things because you can't undo what you've already done, if that makes sense. Oh, next question comes from Kara Corey Fit Life, also a fellow YouTuber. So be sure to check out her channel. Um, Kara Corey has been doing this thing for a long time and I really enjoy um, having her friendship through social media. So Kara Corey asks, any tips on how you stay driven in your off season or just when you don't have another fitness goal in sight? Well, I will say when I didn't have such strong um, goals formulated for myself, I did have a little bit more of a lackadaisical off season. Um, and I do credit my coach for pushing me outside my comfort zone and outside what, you know, was a, a smaller level of competition for me. Fitness America, Fitness Universe didn't provide the drive and incentive that the NPC and IFBB is providing for me. I do know that I have big shoes to fill in the NPC and IFBB. So I have to come in tighter. I have to come in stronger conditioned. And because of that, I have to refocus myself and have a stronger off season and have just a tighter off season because of that. Keeping a conditioned physique in the off season, I will say for me and for my health is not in my best interest. We'll kind of go into that in just a minute. But because of that, I need to stay really focused. And that's just the nature of my physique, the nature of my health at this point is I did have to allow body fat to come up just to just a good bit to go back to fully female functioning. And so if you can kind of understand where I'm going with that, but that was just the nature of where I particularly needed to go in order to better you know, my health internally and kind of reset my cylinders. I've talked a little bit about that. So I didn't really need um, you know, an, another fitness goal in mind per se in previous seasons, but um, so I did kind of just let myself, not let myself go in my off season, but I wasn't nearly as strict as I'm being currently. And um, how I stay motivated is and driven is knowing where my physique is in an off season in comparison to where it needs to go. And knowing where my physique can be if I don't stay focused, just um, because I, I'm Native American, I'm Italian, I truly just am built genetically to not be a lean bean. I put on muscle quickly, so that's a blessing. However, I know that body fat comes with that. So, and for my body to build quality tissue, I need to be in an environment internally where body fat's just a little bit higher. I've just kind of grown to understand this about myself. So me being driven in the off season is basically knowing that I've got, like I said, some big old shoes to fill if I wanna make a run for it in 2017. So yeah, that keeps me driven. 
uh, watching watching IFBB pros in the bikini division that I wholeheartedly respect and that are also pioneers in teaching women to you know learn what they're doing as far as training goes and what they're doing as far as their intake goes like watching those women really you know keeps me driven and keeps me grounded um, watching the hypersexualization of the industry doesn't keep me driven and doesn't keep me grounded. So, you know, stay focused on the women you respect and the athletes that you respect and stay driven on, you know, the people, who, whether, whether not even be physique competing, but say your goal is, you know, in relation to, you know, powerlifting or Olympic lifting, you know, stay focused on those athletes that you truly admire and you admire them for not only their performance, but who they are. And like intrinsically, you will start to kind of be driven by the need to succeed and succeed in a great way. So that would be my best advice to staying driven in your off season is maybe sometimes set your goals up to be a little higher than what you think you can, you can achieve. Like I said, be audacious because the more audacious you are, the more um, little bit less confident you are in achieving your goal, so the more driven you'll be to actually succeed. So hope that made a little sense. Great question, Kara. Next thing is Care Bear 181 asks, are you setting your own macros or working with your coach? I am 100% working with my coach. What I've learned is that I am not as objective as he is. And I am a type A person and like to control things. So I do like to play a little bit of the puppet in that sense and I do as he says and then we talk about it in the future so I do as he says now and then I ask questions later I like to actually see how the macros play out or how the changes in training or how the changes in things play out and then discuss it with him because I feel like coming to him with um, an idea of what it's done for me or my feedback for the situation provides me with better content to give him, you know, the questions of why. Um, I, I get a lot of times as a coach myself, you know, athletes questioning before they've even attempted to try or athletes overstepping the process before they've even implemented it. Um, so that's one thing as an athlete you have to be aware of is let things settle in. A coach who's changing your macros all the time just for the sake of changing them isn't doing you any favors because it's not they're not helping you a set a routine um that's the part i struggle with the most if my macros get changed really quickly really often is that i it throws me off a routine and then i kind of have to relearn those macros re-memorize meal meal option in those macros so you know coaches who are constantly changing things I almost think they're doing a little bit of a disservice to you seeing the results you need to see and understanding those results. Just like I've said before, everything is a variable and it's an experiment and variables throw things off. So the more consistent you are and each time you change one variable, you're going to know exactly the impact of that variable. You change five variables, you're not gonna know what variable one impacted if you hadn't changed variable two. Hopefully that makes sense. Miss Fit Christy asks, seems like in my improvement season, all my weight goes straight to my stomach. Anything you know about how to not have it collect there? Well, Miss Fit Christy, unfortunately, where we accumulate fat cells is a genetic predisposition. And that is why you retain fat cells in other areas, more so than others. You cannot spot train, you can't do a thousand crunches, and hope that you are going to burn body fat over your abdomen area. Losing body fat, regardless of area, takes a deficit overall. So you can't tell your body where it is that you want it to lose fat cells. That just doesn't happen. Um, if it did, I can guarantee you um, women wouldn't have the need to get breast augmentations from competing. So you can't tell your body where it's going to store body fat or lose body fat first. So unfortunately, if it just tends to collect there, you probably have a genetic predisposition to accumulate fat cells there. Over time, allowing your body to become leaner and changing your body composition, over time it will become, your fat cells can accumulate less in other areas. I have noticed that over time, um, the leaner I get, or the more often you know I get through a season, 
I tend to accumulate fat less and less in my abdomen area. But either way, I'm kind of the same wheelhouse as you, Miss Fit Christie, is that my abdomen area and my trunk overall, including my back, is where I gain most of my width back. My legs get a little bit fuller. Um, my rear gets a little bit fuller, but mostly I gain my fat cells in my trunk. So my back, my midsection. Again, it's, it's not as much as it has been in the past. I've been able to keep a little bit tighter physique in my trunk, but Regardless, that's where it's going. So unfortunately, I don't have a way in which you can not collect it there, except for just be being, you know, over time, if say, I don't know if you're a competitive athlete, Miss Fit Christy, but over time, you know, the more improvement you create in your physique and the more, you know, you change your body composition, then you won't accumulate fat cells nearly as much in that area, but most likely, that's going to be the area when you do accumulate, that's where it does happen to be. And again, it's a, pre it's a genetic predisposition. So, um, sorry, I don't have any other information for that, but maybe my followers, if you will comment below um, and help Miss Fit Christy out. But again, I'm pretty sure everybody's gonna have the same feedback as me on that one. All right, guys, so that is the end of my little short Q&A. I really appreciate all the comments on my Instagram um, about my off season and just having interest invested in this process with me. Again, I thank you for continuing to watch because your girl ain't shreddy no more. And you know, I feel just like social media is like driven by those shreddy people. But I'm here to educate in a form and help you guys, um, especially for physique athletes, you know, understand the ebbs and flows of things. But um, without further ado, I am going to let you guys watch this back workout from I believe two Fridays ago. Sorry. Um, I just wanted to share the footage because I have two glute workouts and not many upper body workouts for you guys. So hope you guys enjoy the workout and I will see you guys when it's over. So that brings me to today which is a back and by uh, day with focus on volume. So again with volume my goal is more of a higher rep range and sticking to a new weight so weight factor for that increased volume. So um, I'm going to start the workout work workout with some rack pulls. Then we're going to go into some underhand barbell rows, kneeling row, dumbbell rows, and some cable work. And then we're going to finish off with some biceps. But you're going to get to see that footage here in just a minute. So enjoy the workout with us.
workout and I tried to film that triple set for biceps but uh, yeah I missed the last <laughs> set um, because it was a standing movement and I had the camera not taking up a bench so I didn't have it elevated enough for you to see that clip. You just saw a nice clip of my rear, which is unlike Chanel to put a rear on the <laughs> on the social media. But anywho, um, that was an awesome workout. I don't really like volume at all. In fact, I like hate it. Um, I feel like a lot weaker in terms of volume in comparison to um, my strength work, my load days. So. It's always kind of humbling to add those high reps in there and see what uh, that cardio looks like for them rack pulls because that's basically like deadlift cardio in a nutshell. And there was that lovely triple set. So you guys missed the standing wide dumbbell curls, which the standing wide dumbbell curls, I actually push my elbow beyond the midline of the body and hold those elbows in tight and release the dumbbells down to the side, um, the outer side of my thigh and keep the elbows in stabilized and raise the dumbbells up to my uh, full bicep curl and then back down again so um, I do program those quite a bit in my client programming and I really was hoping to get a clip of those but mm, sorry guys All right. so thank you guys for watching and if you liked this video please give me a thumbs up Please comment below any questions you may have further about my off season. You never know what I'll answer in the following videos to come. And please subscribe to my channel so you can stay up to date on the off season process and my Audacious Athlete series. And thank you guys for watching. Bye bye. Are you ready for the chase now? Take it out, don't let it